This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. A top Israeli official has called for the Palestinian village of Huwada to be wiped out or erased, just days after hundreds of Israeli settlers attacked the city, setting cars and homes on fire and killing a Palestinian man who had just returned from Turkey, where he was helping with relief efforts after the earthquakes. Israel's far-right finance minister, Smotrich, made these shocking comments on Wednesday. The Palestinian village Hawara should be wiped out. The state needs to do it, not private citizens. Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Shteya visited Hawara Wednesday to meet with families who survived the violent attack. What we have seen here in this house is evidence of how big the crime carried out by the settlers and covered and protected by the army is. It is clear that this move is supported by a political decision from the Israeli government. Therefore, three sides are partners in this crime. The government, which takes the political decision, the army who is protecting, and the settlers who are implementing. This is what we saw here. The Israeli human rights group Petzalem accused Benjamin Netanyahu's government of backing a pogrom in Hawara. In a statement, the group said, quote, the Jewish supremacist regime carried out a pogrom in the villages around Nablus yesterday. This isn't loss of control. This is exactly what Israeli control looks like. The settlers carry out the attack. The military secures it. The politicians back it. It's a synergy. On Wednesday, Israeli Army Commander of the West Bank Major General Yehuda Fuchs admitted what happened in Hawara was a pogrom. The incident in Hawara was a pogrom carried out by outlaws. We were prepared as we prepare for every terror attack. There's a phenomenon of outlaws taking to intersections to throw stones and block Palestinian roads in the area. I don't think that collective punishment helps to combat terrorism. On the contrary, I think it might even cause terrorism. The settler attack in Hawara began hours after a Palestinian gunman shot dead two Israeli brothers from a nearby settlement. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government is continuing to face mass protests from Israelis opposed to plans to overhaul Israel's legal system. On Wednesday, Israeli police fired stun grenades and wa water cannons at Israeli protesters taking part in a so-called day of disruption, as thousands protested in Tel Aviv. We're joined now by two guests. Gidon Levy is with us. He's an award-winning Israeli journalist and author, columnist with the newspaper Haaretz, member of its editorial board. His latest piece is headlined, Israeli Settlers Hawara Pogrom was a preview of Sabra and Shatila II. Gideon Levy is also the author of the book, The Punishment of Gaza. And Saddam Omar is with us, a resident of Hawara who witnessed the attacks by Israeli settlers. Let us begin there. Saddam, can you talk about what happened on Sunday? Where were you in Hawara? And describe where Hawara is in the occupied West Bank. First of all, good morning to you and to everybody. Uh, I want just to let, let me remind you and everyone that this uh, tragedy started not on Sunday. This started for more than 106 years, 1917, and our suffering is going on since that time. Actually, Israel, as you know, occupied West Bank, Palestine, and Gaza Strip since 1967. And since that time, they violated, they violated international law by moving hundreds of thousands of Jewish-only squatters, colonists, into the Palestinian-occupied land. In response, Palestinians have been resisting the occupiers. For Hawara and what happened on Sunday night, it was not the first time and it was not only for killing of two Israelis in Hawara. What happened really was a few days before, when Israel, Israeli army did a massacre in Nablus. They killed 11 people, including two old 
men in their, in their late 70s and few children. This terrorism led by the Israeli army is a continuous action since 1967 and before that time. This, the, 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 the campaign that happened in Hawara on Sunday night was protected, planned, organized by the Israeli army. Those squatters helped, protected, organized the settlers to do what they did. The army prevented any citizen to defend himself. And you saw what happened with Samah al-Aqtash, a 37 years old man who recently came back from Turkey, helping people there after the catastrophe of the earthquake. A few days later, those squatters, barbarian settlers, attacked him. He was trying to defend his wife, mother, sisters, children. But they prevent him, prevented him, and killed him with cold blood. The army now has handed Benset control by Smutrich and Ben Gavir, who are already settlers. This massacre, this accident happened in Hawara, supposed to making the settlers to take control of the whole West Bank. The Israel Occupation Army is complicit in a drastic surge in terrorism committed by Israeli colonists against Palestinian civilians. The recent terrorist attack against the residents of Hawara was pre-planned, pre-prepared by the occupation army and the settler militias. We all heard what Smotrich said. Hawara must be wiped out. It's not a new thing. The, the, the previous militias of those settlers already wiped out more than 500 villages and towns of Palestine when they occupied the lands of 48 and 67. Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were evicted from their houses and homes to the West Bank, Jordan, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and world, worldwide. The extreme government of Israel is a threat to Palestinians, to Israelis themselves, to the region, and to the whole world. This is what I believe. Gideon Levy, could you uh, talk about what happened in Hawara and also the uh, massive increase in uh, settler violence since this far-right government came into power? You shouldn't start with this violent uh, government, because the last year with the so-called moderate government was not any better. There were almost 200 Palestinians killed in this year, more than in any other year in the last 15 years. So we couldn't put all the blame on this government. I came to Hawara on the morning after. Hawara was practically under a, a curfew. And what I saw there, I saw very few times in 35 years of covering the occupation. It really looked like a town after after a pogrom. There's no other way to describe it. Uh, quite uh, uh, horrified people and shocked people sitting in their homes, afraid to get out. 
all the shops closed and only traffic of, you won't believe it, Amy, the only traffic that was allowed was obviously the settlers who came back to see what they've done the night before and what they didn't complete. They did it in a very brutal way, as they always do. Don't forget there were 400 settlers in Hawara the night before, according to the army, which means they might have been even more. And nobody stopped them. And this is maybe the core issue, the fact that nobody stopped a raid of 400 uh, settlers on an innocent village tells you the whole story. Saddam, could you uh, describe now what the situation is in Hawara today? You said that immediately after the massacre, a curfew was imposed. What's the situation now? It's a total closure. And uh, shops, supermarkets are totally closed. No one, nobody is allowed to open his, uh, his uh, shop or supermarket or whatever it is. If you try to open your shop, you will be arrested immediately. Yesterday, a citizen called Omar has been, had been arrested for trying to open his shop, and he's violently treated. According to what we witnessed, the occupation army did not take measures to block the settlers' path to Hawara, nor did it stop them from systematically, systematically attacking Palestinians and their properties, nor did it carry out appropriate arrests. They claim they have arrests, but till now we, we saw nothing. The occupation army sought to let the settlers vent their anger. Following the settlers' terrorist campaign, the occupation government of Israel didn't take any significant actions to address the settlers' lawlessness. Instead, some occupation officials, just like Smotrich, publicly supported the settlers by saying words like, Hawara should be wiped out. The Israeli settlers took advantage of the situation by inflicting millions of dollars of damage onto the town of Hawara, by destroying, burning, anything in sight. There was no specific target of their attacks. Rather, it was whatever happened to cross into their line of sight. I mean, trees, cars, car spare, car spare parts shops, homes, livestock, market stalls, shops, supermarkets, whatever they saw, they destroyed. They were being guarded by the Israeli army, who trailed behind them a few meters as protection. Hundreds of residents were injured from the barbaric methods they utilized. They lit homes on fire while the residents were still inside. They used tear gas, they stored stones, they used iron rods. I want to ask— And they were— Yes, please. I, I wanted to bring Gideon Levy back into this, because we're seeing massive protests in the streets of Tel Aviv of Israelis, uh, now hit with um, stun grenades and water cannons. But they're not protesting what's happening in Hawara. They're protesting um, the Israeli—Benjamin uh, Netanyahu's attempt to gut the Israeli judiciary. Are these protests morphing into protests of what has happened in Huara, or are they just two completely different issues for Israelis? They are not two completely issues at all, because both deal with democracy. The problem is that the protest movement in Israel wants to keep an eye closed and not to see the occupation as part of the problem of the Israeli democratic regime or non-democratic regime. This is really outrageous, because it's not that they don't deal with Hawara. They do anything possible to break away from dealing with Hawara, with the occupation, with all those issues which are part and parcel of Israel's regime. And therefore, this protest, which I cannot participate by all means, 
is a protest over democracy for the Jews in the state of Israel, nothing but this. And anyone who really looks for equality and democracy cannot participate in this, in this uh, protest, as impressive as it is, as powerful as it is. But we have to remember they are concerned only about themselves, only about democratic, democratic regime for the Jews in Israel, not for anyone else who lives between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean. Saddam, very quickly, we have just a minute. What do you think uh, the international community should be doing? How can the Palestinians be supported now, given this massive onslaught of violence? I, 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 I want to, to add something that it was a barbaric sight that you can only describe by an ethnic cleansing. It's, it's very sure that this is the, the proper description for what happened. But for the international community. We need them to interfere and to bring peace and stability to the Middle East, not the United States. You know, the United States of America is a party to the conflict. The United States of America is a part of this conflict. It's not a referee. You are saying it's not the judge, it's not the proper judge for this conflict. Saddam, we have five the seconds. The United States of America, yes, yes. The United States of America is providing the, uh, the occupiers with full support. They have to stop, and the uh, international community should interfere to protect the civilian. Saddam of Omar and Gideon Levy, thank you so much for being with us. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh.